Hey everyone, Jeff with OptionBoxer.com. Um, got another video for you. I'll go ahead and tell you before I get into this that I'm not really sure what prompted me to make this video. Um, I got to thinking about my, my own equity graph over time and for some reason one thing led to another and, and here we are. Um, but hopefully you can learn something from it. I know it was kind of uh, enlightening for me. Um, but it, I think these three charts, the three at the top I should say, um, I think they describe all of us as options traders maybe at different times um, or possibly you're just an option buyer I think this chart would kind of show what your equity graph may look like um, option sellers I think it would look something similar to that um, or if you try to trade you know buying and selling uh, let's just say spreads or, or whatever option strategy you you use um, I think we would fall into one of these three graphs or possibly all three of them at different times but uh you know, just looking at the options uh, buyers graph here, you can see we got a, a little bit of a propensity for you know trading lower as we take more losses. Our win percentage is generally low when we're buying, um, you know, especially if we're looking at just long options or possibly long spreads. And then occasionally we'll get that one big winner that'll that'll prop us up. And then uh, of course the trend continues and we kind of trend lower and lower and lower before we get another big winner and it kind of props us up. And that just kind of repeats itself until maybe at some point we kind of compound and we get two winners in a row or three winners or however many ends up being before the trend kind of works itself back uh, back out and we, we trade a little bit lower before hitting another big winner. And I think that describes most option buyers. Um, similarly, I think uh, describing option sellers, you know, let's say we're selling spreads or possibly naked puts or something. I think we have a higher probability of success because we're typically out of the money. But then you do have these trades that, that creep in on you that end up wiping out all of those gains. And so you can see we'll trade up and then we'll have a big loss. We'll trade up and then a big loss and so forth and so on. And at some point you may find yourself, you know, kind of at the peak and you, you're thinking, man, I'm just unstoppable at this uh, option selling thing. And then before you know it, you've uh, you've encountered several big losses in a row and you're right back to where you started. Um, I think for this trader over here, the one that trades e either buying and selling, let's say they possibly you know buy long options and they sell uh, puts or something. Um, I think theirs is a little more sporadic. There's not really any uh, you know discernible trend other than you know maybe they just had a string of bad trades here and they they fell down. Um, but they kind of bounce around wildly, and uh, you know we I, I, and I say they I, I'm, I should include myself in that that uh, conversation. Um, I think we as options traders sometimes we fall into this camp where we're trying to time the market or trying to you know force our strategy into the the market. And it's just not uh, not all that effective. But uh, I think this uh, pretty much describes all options tr uh, traders in some way. And maybe it's uh, not as interesting to you as it is to me at this moment. Um, but uh, but I wanted to share it with you. And uh, so really quickly before we, we break from this video, uh, these three charts down below are the exact same chart as these three. It was just kind of curious to me to see the outcome here. So you can see we lost some money on a couple of these. Broke even came, came out to zero. And we know options is a zero sum game, so that all kind of makes sense. You know, we you know if you're an option buyer and you end up a couple dollars ahead or a couple dollars behind, that that all kind of adds up. Uh, you know, in the zero sum uh, conversation. Uh, but here's what I did for the the three charts below. All I did is th that's why the win percentages are the same. You'll notice they're the same um, all the way across. All I did was for every winning trade that I had on these uh, three hypothetical examples here. Um, is I just added a dollar. I, all I did was add one dollar. Um, and I know that seems kind of, I don't know, silly, uh, but I just added a dollar and you can see it made a huge difference. Um, and we're not talking about huge volatility here, 100 uh, there, either way, $40 higher, $20 lower. I mean, it's not like we're ranging $10,000 with these examples. I mean, of course, you can multiply this by whatever number of contracts or whatever. Uh, value you want. Um, I just wanted to do it more for the the graphical depiction, less for the uh, the reality of the amount of dollars being uh, traded. Um, but I just added a dollar, and you know, in your own trading, adding ten dollars or twenty or a hundred, uh, whatever it is, based on your account size, um, you know, and these numbers of course change. But just by adding a dollar to each uh, each graph, these are the same graphs. Like I, I really couldn't get over the fact that this one looks so different. The option sellers. Uh, graph, it, you know, just by adding one dollar to every um, winning trade, and I didn't change the losing trades at all. Some of the losers were still big, some of them uh, were small, 
Um, again, didn't change any of my losing trades because as you know, as an options trader, you'll, you'll find yourself at some point with a trade on and the market starts moving really quickly and you just either you're at work or you're not uh, in front of the computer and you just don't, you can't react. Um, and before you know it, you're, you're facing that big loss that you, uh, you didn't really want. Um, but that's, uh, that's all accounted for in these kind of these hypothetical examples. And, uh, by, but just by adding $1 to the trade, you can see it makes just a huge difference um, on all three of these. And I think to add a dollar to every single trade, I think it's manageable. I know you're probably thinking, um, well, yeah, if I could do that, I would have been doing it this whole time. Um, and, and I agree with you. And I think we all you know, try to squeeze out as much profit as we can. Um, but I think we're all kind of timid when it comes to taking profit. We all, we all heard the saying, Hey, let's, let's close it. You can't lose taking profits or you can't go broke taking profits off the table. And, and I know that's true. Uh, but let's say you were just a little more patient instead of closing it at, you know, lunchtime, let's say you waited five more minutes and then the market did give you a little bump in price and you were able to get that extra dollar. So I think to get that extra dollar on every trade and, and sure, some of them won't work out and, and some of the winners may turn into losers based on just trying to grab that one, uh, one dollar. But I think some of the losers may also turn into winners. And, uh, you know, maybe I'm wrong in that, that argument, but it was pretty eye opening just to see what $1 more, uh, per winning trade would do for your profit and loss. Anyways, guys, I just want to share that video with you. It was kind of something I was thinking about and I was just curious to kind of see it, uh, you know, put down on paper or on Excel here. And, uh, and I thought you might find it interesting as well. Um, if you like any of the videos I'm uh, putting out there, please do consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps me. If you uh, have any interest, uh, optionboxer.com has plenty of options information. Uh, but thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.